Hi, I'm Ruth Kenner from I Quilted More, and today we're going to talk about more. I actually am a quilter first. I sew, I love to piece things, and I love to quilt things, but I've always sewn uh, clothes. I especially like to clothes right now, sew clothes for my granddaughter, but I also like to sew clothes for myself and once in a while for my uh, other, my kids, even though they're adults. So I got this new sewing machine and it sews also. And I decided to start with knits. And the reason is, is that about 15 years ago, we moved countries and I don't have a serger anymore. I stopped sewing knits. And I did some on my other machine, but I decided to try out knits on this machine. And of course, I'm wearing the pants. Da -da. <laughs> these I just finished straight off the drawing board. The thing about these pants is I decided if I haven't sewn knits for a long time, that I would start with a really easy pattern. And this is it. And what I really like about this pattern, besides the fact that it's really easy, the other thing I like about it is it's for hacking. And my mother, may her memory be a, for a blessing, what, we would hack patterns all the time. That's something that we really like to do together. And we would change sleeves, we would change other things. And what I found is online there's courses for hacking, there's patterns that teach you how to hack. So I was really thrilled about that. And this, this pattern was easy, all I did was make them shorter but there is a lot of other options. And the other thing that I found is, is that there's a lot of really great uh, online resources. So I belong to uh, Blueprint, and I'm gonna give you a link, and I believe the name is Ann Stevens, it has a class that I would really recommend called Sewing Knits Without a Serger. I have a subscription, you can also purchase the class. Uh, to have all the time or use it if you have a subscription and I just love it. It was a really big asset But the machine itself I found out has a really big asset uh, That in in addition to really being able to sew knits it kind of teaches you how now It's not exactly because it is consulting Okay, and that's why I uh, I call it a consultant uh, I stress that because you still have to experiment with what they say. So we're gonna go through and see what I did, okay? So here we have, and let me get all the way out. I have the material that I used, and I have several examples of it here, pieces of it. And I took a look right here, and I pressed question mark to see what kind it is. And it's medium weight sweatshirt knit, though this isn't really sweatshirt. It has that kind of feeling to, towards it. So I decided it was medium weight. I definitely wasn't heavyweight, and so I went right through, and I went in, and there it is. There's a bunch of pictures right here. There is straight sewing, and it comes up with all sorts of things right there. If you don't want to use anything, you can get out. What it does do is it tells you what stitch, and I'm going to talk a little bit about it, but it also tells you what thread, it, uh, what, I'm sorry, what a needle it recommends. Now this has to be updated and I'm so lucky that I knew about my blueprint because this is a special uh, needle that they recommend and it's called a Jersey needle. And I happened to find out, because I hadn't done this for so long, about stretch. And it doesn't say that. So I'm hoping uh, that in the future it gets even better. But remember, it's a consultant. The other thing it says is it recommends 100 over 2, which is 100 weight polyester over 2. And the course I took also recommended very fine poly polyester thread. But 100, I couldn't find any 100. Then I remembered, because I am a quilter, that one of my favorite threads is for uh, when I'm quilting or when I'm piecing, so often I use it, is this very fine thread that I have so much of called the Bottom Line by Superior. It really works well, but I did try another polyester just to tell you, just to see what it looked like. So going from there, let me get out, go back into it. It said use 1D foot, and of course I have the 1D foot. It actually came with a machine. 1D means that you have to activate, I'll put this on even though this is a C foot, you activate the bottom part and it uses, it goes through. So that's what we know so far. Now, I, uh, I'm not going to uh, change everything around. I could, but I'm, I'm just going to leave this on for right now. But 
if I press X, I just go out of there. I said, oops, I pressed that by accident. It won't take me all the way back to the beginning. It takes me to where I was. I press check and there it is. It sets me up, okay? Now, if you see here, it's 3.5 millimeters tension, it's changed and 30 is changed, but you wanna experiment with it. The tension was perfect. 30 was perfect. This is 2.5, so they lengthened it a little bit, and 0.8. Now, 0.8 means that I could actually get a smaller one. I have a 9 millimeter standard on here. But what I did is, is I changed it to the 5.5. You can see it right here. It's a little smaller. It's 5.5. I went ahead and changed it because I always use as small as I can. If I used a zero, I wouldn't have any at all okay so that was the one thing i did i pretty much uh, played with the tension of the pressure foot because it was too far it was too close and i changed it to 25. and i of course tested quite a bit to make sure that i didn't pull the material too much and that's why i did it so i have some examples here of what i did to find out which needle was correct and this is something that I think that you can get a close-up of. Um, I used with the other thread that I bought that was a little bit heavier than the other one. And this is using the Jersey needle and this is using the stretch needle. And you can see this kind of bulks up a little bit and this sews a lot better. But all of them, I the, the, the number 11 stitch on this machine was perfect. See how I can stretch it? That was perfect. But then I went with the other thread, and this is with the Jersey needle uh, that they call for. It's called SUK. I don't know what that is. Suck. <laughs> okay. Doesn't sound right. And then there's the stretch needle, the 75, and you can see it lays a lot flat, a lot flatter, much even, much more even. And there it goes. And if you open it up, there it is. It's perfect. Okay. So. There it is here. It is also uh, looks very good. So I went with the Jersey uh, stitch and the Superior. Um, that's the company name. <laughs> Not the, it is Superior Thread for this, but it's also the name of the thread. So I went with that and I stitched up all the sides. Then I came to the next part where I like it clean cut. No, neither the course, the course that I took, she didn't mention doing this. But I trimmed these down and then did a, a stitch right on top that you can see here, okay? And what I did is, again, creative consultant. Creative consultant right there. See finishing the edge? If I ask the question, overcasting. So that's what I wanted to do for a clean, uh, to get rid of raw edges. So I was really thrilled about that. So I go right there and right again, the I, I stayed with the jersey, um, not the jersey, I'm sorry. Yeah, the stretch needle. And it said silk finish cotton 50 over three. I have lots of cotton uh, thread hanging around that I don't use. So I found some in beige and used it. Not a problem. It calls for 2A. I don't have the 2A, but I have the two. And it's basically the same stitch. It's from the old, my older machine. And you can see it here. And so I had everything I needed. I just wanted to test it to make sure that it stretched. Along with it, I pressed there and everything goes in. Now, I have the, uh, right here, I would have the 5.5 on because I always use as narrow as I can. Always use as narrow as I can. I left that at 25 and I just sewed up the sides and you can see here in my uh, thing, and it kind of looks a little wonky because I stretched it quite a bit. Okay, this was so easy, I had no problems. I just went straight in. This was the the stitch, I finished it, I went ahead and did it, I worked it out for the elastic on my own, I stitched things, really beautiful. Then I came to um, the decorative stitches. I wanted to do decorative stitches on this, and I know it's really difficult to do decorative stitches on knits but I wanted to see if I can get this done. So if you can zero in, here's a decorative stitch. And that's pretty good, decorative stitch. It's laying, if I hold it up, you can see it's laying really flat and straight. It really hangs well. 
for a decorative stitch to be able to do it on knits, fantastic. Now, what did I come into trouble with? It, it recommended polyester. I have a lot of polyester thread and uh, that I love. It happens to be from uh, Superior, but I use other things. I have one C, I decided to use the 39 C and I switched everything over to nine millimeters because I wanted it wide. And here, if I ask it, it says use stabilizer for best results and I did use a stabilizer and I will show you that. Let me get back in here. Now here is the problem, the main problem that went with this and this I hope that they update. I went into this, ta-da, 741. According to Bernina, I it'll only fix itself if I, and I could only use the 741. When I switched, because I had already picked out 615, let me get into 615. Okay, tension goes back to normal. So what I had to do, and I'll go back into here, um, go here, I basically went, looked at that, did the math. Okay, oh, wait, I have this, uh, there we go. Okay, so, um, and you can see it's a 9.0. I had to do the math, so I cleared it, okay, right here, 325, and they suggest 125, so that means that it was uh, 1.75 difference because they didn't fix itself. So I had to go back in, and here, let me get this uh, right there again. So I had to put in 615 and mess around with the tension to get it to work right. The other thing that I would have to do anyways is the pressure foot. Uh, and that makes sense because they really don't know how high, how much pile, how thick a knit could be. So that I changed to, tw to 25. Let me get into 615 and show you. And there it is. And um, I changed it. It was very easy to change once I figured it out, what I wanted to do. Um, anything higher, the needle, the it broke. But the big uh, difference was is the needle. I had to use a top stitch needle, even not a stretch needle, not a jersey needle, and that they didn't say because the hole in the needle just isn't big enough for the 40. And so those are things that maybe Bernina could add in, or maybe it's not that important. We just have to remember this is a consultant. It's not it's not something, it's not a law, it's not a test in school that we have to follow it. It just makes our life a lot easier, especially by uh, giving us a guidance. Because I, it really made it easier for, my, for me to find that tension, and even though I had to go lighter up. Then, what did I do to make this lay flat? Okay, so I tested it on several areas, and you could see I tested several things, and here I messed it up. That's why I experiment, because I make silly mistakes. But I'm going to show you what I did, and we're going to move around here. Okay, so if I, if I, do you have that? Okay, so I experimented using the basic ham, and I have this from Quilters. I'm going to put this online. Uh, uh, I'm going to put... Uh, a link to this. Um, other companies make it. I, I, They're probably very good, but I know this company. So I'll put a link to this because this is the one I've tried and I love it. So basically, when it was finished, it looked like this. It looked, I'm sorry, it looked like this. See how bulky it was? All I did was steam iron it on this. When I tried to steam iron on that, it worked a bit, not as well, but a little bit. So how did I prepare it? I have uh, steam a seam two, and I took this, and I think that I have a little, I might have a better place to show you, but let me get this off. I thought it was prepared, but just to show you this little section, I take this and I stick it to this, and I only the only difference is I go all the way around and I iron it, and I might put something underneath because I don't want to damage it. And voila, there you go. And when it's done, I wait until it cools off. Then I take this off and I might uh, take it off beforehand because I want to show you. All right, so nothing happened, pretty good. And I basically uh, just sew it down on the half inch and it folds naturally, okay? So I fold that down and I steam it. 
And the reason why I steam it is, is I want it to be really stiff. I probably wouldn't have to steam, steam it if I was doing wools, but this isn't wools. And then I just turn it over and I sew it on that. And it makes it stiff enough that I could actually do it. But either way, it comes out looking like this. So what do you do? And I could show you right here. I just take it and I steamed it after I sewed it, just like this. This has a steam on it. And you can see I use a lot of steam. Some of them I had to do more than once. I believe parts of it for some reason. Uh, some people say press. I don't, that's the old way of doing it. I don't think that it matters. I could iron or press because I'm on this mat. It seems to work really good and you can see how it just straightened up. That's amazing. The uh, So between having the consultant, having my blueprint, a uh, class I could take, having this mat, this wool mat, I have uh, really got to the point where we can do things that if my mother was alive, she would be thrilled. She'd be having such a good time, and I'm definitely having a good time. I love this. And the only other improvement that I wish that they would get is I wish they would get an app for my phone. Of course, it won't man manipulate the sewing machine, but I would love to have an app with a creative consultant in it so when I'm buying fabric, I know what needles to buy, and I could find out if it recommends a foot, and I could look up to see if I have that foot. Maybe I'd want to buy the foot. Maybe that could, they could add on to that, but even if, we, we, if all of that stays, the creative consultant is really an exciting part of this a sewing machine and the way we work and the way we could learn things right just by pressing a button. And maybe in a month or two, I'm gonna work with uh, wool, heavy wool, and see how the creative consultant uh, helps me out in, in that area. Uh, but definitely, uh, Hopefully next week uh, I'll be back and talking about quilting stuff because that's what I mostly do. All right. Thank you. Have a good week.